And now we go to the second architect that we pay homage to in fewer images. It was hard for me to find a lot of material about him. He was the second director of the Bauhaus. And this is Hans Meyer, who lived between 1889 and 1954. So after Walter Gropius, um, the director of the Bauhaus became Hans Meyer, chosen probably by uh, uh, Walter Gropius. And after Hans Meyer came uh, um, Miss van der Rohe. So the Bauhaus in Germany had three directors, Walter Gropius, Hans Meyer, and uh, Miss van der Rohe. <clears throat> this was the man um, and uh, he was accused of well, he was a, a you know had com communistic tendencies. He even went to Russia or Soviet Union at that time and worked for some years there. He he had a very uh, you know intense interest in an ethical architecture with social concerns, some kind of a functionalist. Uh, international style of architecture, almost anonymous architecture. He was not a, uh, a sensualist or a hedonist in architecture. He was not a theater man in architecture, but uh, I think uh, in his uh, discreet uh, or reticent ways, in some respects, he was probably more radical than both Walter Gropius and Mies. Uh, this is, uh, uh, let's see, uh, he all fore forever, uh, forever stood in the shadow of his predecessor, Walter Gropius, and his successor, Ludwig, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. Now, two key buildings by Hans Meyer have become part of the world car cultural heritage. At long last, declares this person, Philippe uh, Oswald. Uh, so, Let's read a little bit about, uh, uh, about this. The expansion of the Bauhaus World Cultural Heritage Site to include two key buildings designed by architect Hans Meyer is a long overdue acknowledgement of the efforts of the second director of the Bauhaus over whom following his expulsion in 1930, the cloak of silence was cast for decades and who, at the instigation of his predecessor, Walter Gropius, was deliberately the target of calumny. While Walter Gropius' oeuvre was uncritically celebrated, usually no one mentions the central contribution Meyer made to an art architecture engagé, uh, an engaged architecture. The buildings with the covered walkways in Dessau and the Trade Union College in Bernau a pioneering and still valid attempts to use architecture to foster social emancipation, to erect a more just and social commonality. While Gropius above all created the so-called Bauhaus style and made certain it gained sway, it was Meyer who primarily grasped architecture as a social task and therefore critically addressed his own profession and its propensity to opt for formalist solutions. So he was the very opposite of a formalist. And uh, uh, in this sense, I think he's very important. Uh, he's not spectacular, but somehow in, 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 in his very lack of spectacularness is spectacular. The expansion of the, uh, sorry, I read this, School of the Trade Union, uh, uh, ADGB, in Bernau near Berlin. It was designed by Hans Meyer and Hans Witt Witwer and is now site of the Bauhaus World Car Cultural Heritage. Let's, uh, let's look at it. It's, it's, it's an architecture that could be infuriatingly, uh, you know, uh, not uh, accepting to be a signature architecture. And somehow in its uh, anonymousness, it becomes uh, um, uh, you know, very personal. It's a very simple architecture, 
but not uh, devoid of um, special effects, if we are to call them so, which are of a functionalist order. But there are interesting things here, though, you know, and um, I don't think uh, they are celebrated or, uh, you know, uh, observed with, uh, with, uh, with respect just because, uh, you know, their author was uh, the second director of the Bauhaus. The dining hall at the former school of the ADJGB. Um, the structure almost makes me think a little bit of uh, Geoponte that we just saw. This aspect should be remembered. He was an architect who stressed the, the social attributes uh, of architecture and uh, the ethical aspects of architecture. And I think this is important. His architecture seems to be banal, but there is more behind the apparent so-called banality. It makes me think of the of the of the novel uh, by Robert Musil, Men Without Qualities. You could say that this is an architecture without qualities, but paradoxically, exactly then when it appears to 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 uh, avoid. Uh, Making explicit any so-called qualities, it becomes in a in a in a although discreet but in a in a significant way qualitative. Bedroom wing of the former school of the ADGB. Um, Hans Meyer. stairway to the gymnasium of the same school. This one is, is, is very interesting and I would say also uh, capable of some architectural drama because of these windows, the way they open. It's just a staircase, but you see he created something original out of the ordinary. Uh, from the outside, if the windows were not open, you would say, well, so what? What's so special here? But when you look at this, you might change your mind. A detail of the stairs of the so-called, I, I prefer not to... Uh, <laughs> use my uh, inability uh, to pronounce in German. This is a basic architecture, but it's not easy. Uh, you could say it's a volume zero architecture, referring to the volume zero of the history of architecture that Louis Kahn was searching for, or uh, ground, yeah, uh, ground zero in a way, or uh, volume zero, whatever, something with zero. Houses with access balcony were built in Dessau after the design of Hans Meyer. So the, what I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's possible to do, um, uh, you know, uh, meaningful architecture uh, through reticent means, using reticent means or reticence. And this is what we look at here. And maybe for our time, you know, such an architecture is not uh, inappropriate. It's, it's, a, it's not an architecture of excess, that's for sure. Reconstructed apartment in the same building. What do we see here? All kinds of things that, um, Derive their raison d'etre from from function mainly, but but 
aesthetically also I think they are they are they are uh, pleasant. Peter Schule, it's a it's a process a project which he did, but I don't think it was built. You see, he was not uh, truly anti-architecture at all. I mean, you see the you know the diagonals of the of the staircase and the the big canopy perhaps uh, over the entrance. So there is some drama here. It's it's not uh, you know just uh, maybe maybe he could have uh, worked more and uh, subdue some of the the exaltation of of, of this uh, you know. Uh, two elements that I mentioned. Hans Meyer, the second director of the Bauhaus. A project for, for Basel in Switzerland. The co-op principal, uh, he was, um, well, I see him here, you know, with, uh, I think this is uh, Lotte, his uh, beloved student with whom he fell in love while he was a married man. And there was a big scandal at the Bauhaus because of it. Anyway, he was human like uh, all of us. So uh, this is one of the parties at the Bauhaus. The Bauhaus was famous for, um, uh, for this. And of course, not only for this. Here he is. Uh, maybe this is Lotte, and this is the director of the Bauhaus in an uh, unassuming, uh, uh, you know, position. Interesting school, very interesting school. Uh, in Hans Meyer's co-op bedroom from 1926, this was his bedroom. Look at the bed, uh, and uh, not just the bed. Look at the shelf here. I don't know what he has here. <laughs> you know, some. Uh, uh, you know, uh, condiments or something. Uh, I don't know about the chair, but uh, very austere, almost ascetic uh, bedroom. Did he actually sleep on this? You know, uh, I guess. Anyway, and I end this short presentation on Hans Meyer. I don't know if this phrase. Uh, Often in my search for material about him, I came across this. So it's possible he said it. Design is fine, history is mine. Although Claude Nicolas Ledoux would say himself the same thing. 